All right. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Advocacy and Outreach Special Interest Group. It's Thursday, January 13, 2022. Today's agenda topic will focus on Google Summer of Code. Um, however, uh, we got a we're waiting for Oleg Neneshev, who is um, going to transfer his wisdom to us, uh, but he's not here yet. So we will go ahead with other topic agenda items, uh, which includes uh, She Code Africa and um, the end of year blog. So I will hand it over to Mark and let me see if I can share my screen. Oh, I'm going to actually share mine, Alyssa, if that's okay. Perfect. Because then, then we we can be working off of my my copy. Great. So you should see a blank screen for now, and now an outline of a document. Yes. Correct. Yes. Okay. So, so the Oleg Oleg suggested, and we've done it consistently for many years, that we create a summary end of year blog post uh, to disc to post on Jenkins.io about the results in the Jenkins project in 2021. Um, here on screen, what you see are the is a draft outline that I assembled with docs office hours and with input from the mailing list. The idea is make it primarily looking at people and highlighting people's contribution, but using this framework of big things that did it. And so events, Google Summer of Code with five projects completed, She Code Africa with five women who are mentored. Hacktoberfest with 90 pull, over 90 pull requests and three contributor summits. That's a record for us. We've typically only done one contributor summit a year, and this time we did three. So uh, we've also added several really important new sponsors to the, to the organization, and the sponsors are providing very helpful things for us. So the community site is sponsored by Discourse. Um, our site that hosts all of our archives for the internet are, is hosted by Oracle. Algolia has provided site search. So these are sponsor stories of, hey, look, thanks to them. And I'll, I'll include text on deep thanks for the ongoing sponsors like CloudBees, like AWS, like Red Hat, um, like JFrog, like et cetera. And there are uh, GitHub, there are many ongoing sponsors. One of my worries actually in listing sponsors is I may offend someone by not mentioning how much we value their ongoing sponsorship. So help me as we're, uh, when I submit this for review, I'll look for people's review and comments on, the, did I get the, the right coverage? Exactly. I don't want, I, I want the sponsors to know how grateful we are for what they do for us. Then other topics uh, in 2021, we had some really impressive improvements to core. Uh, configuration form modernization back in March, upgrades to core components like the security framework, like the XML serialization framework, like the Guava libraries. Uh, we've modernized how we're delivering plugins so that many plugins now deliver every time there's a, a relevant commit. Uh, and we've upgraded that Java 11 is now our preferred JVM. So talking those kinds of improvements, really quite impressive. Then security improvements and documentation improvements. And there's a whole data thing on the community site for, for top users and most topics and most replies. So I think we've got good data. Are there other things that you as outreach SIG members would say, oh, oh, Alyssa, I'm sorry, there's one that you had given me that was um, that probably should go in outreach. And that is Jenkins is the way. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Right, because the, that program, the Jenkins is the way program. Now, I don't believe we launched in 2021. We launched before 2021, right? But right, right. We should include the results from 2021 mm -hmm. in the uh, in the summary. Yeah, yes. very good. Anything else that I've missed? Uh, did we participate uh, in FOSDEM of, in 2021? We did. The participation, though, was for me not a highlight, and I okay. intentionally gotcha. left it off here. It's a, it's a good point. Okay. We participated, but I wasn't, at least the feedback we had really was, no, nah, it wasn't, it just wasn't a, a big event for us because it was remote and 
participation yeah. was really complicated. Right. Okay. Just wanted to check. Yeah. Also, didn't note. Let's see. We didn't do scale, so that was one that it was a non. Right. Uh, didn't do CDCon as an event. CDCon certainly was a big event. Um, I didn't put it there because I didn't see an awful lot of Jenkins talks in the in the in the agenda, so I left it off here. We did a contributor summit around CDCon, and that was a nice result. Um, so DevOps world, Mark, do we want to include oh, oh, that? Right. Oh, that's a good one. Right. Yeah, that's, that's a very good one. Certainly, there were a number of talks there, and yeah, very good. All right. Yeah. So now that needs more research. That's a little embarrassing. Sorry that I forgot that no one. So thanks. Yeah, but that, that's one I'm going to have to go digging to get some, because I think that's a good one to highlight. Yes. Yeah. All right. yeah. Let me know if you need help with gathering information for that. Right. Okay. Anything else that you can see obviously missing? That's a great looking list. I was wondering, um, and I don't think we got many of this, but there were people who made monetary donations. Oh, oh, Do we yeah. want to call them out or highlight them? Or I, 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 I don't know. That could be a, a very sensitive um, thing. I, I hesitate to do it because the donations are relatively small um, okay. in ter through, through the donor site. Now, there is one of the donations will be highlighted. AWS donated $60,000 mm. and, and oh. in AWS credits. And so that's a significant donation. That and, and that I will, I will note in the, in the ongoing sponsors section. Okay. Okay. That sounds, that sounds good to me. All right. So that was it for the, that outline. The other piece was on, um, she code Africa contribute on. Yeah. So last year in 2021, we as a Jenkins project um, enlisted and participated by mentoring five women from Africa. They were from Nigeria, Rwanda, and I believe it was Tanzania, uh, and mentored these five women from Africa as they began their first contributions to an open source project and they were contributing to Jenkins. Um, we'd like to do that again this year. We'd like to use what we learned from last year's experiences to do a better job. Um, one of the, some of the things that we see benefit this year, it's starting one month later. So instead of starting 1st of April, um, or start, instead of starting 1st of March, it will start 1st of April. So we've got a little more time to prepare and plan. Uh, it's going to be a longer session this time. So instead of just four weeks like we had last time, it will be a two-week warm-up period, four weeks of development, then a two-week two cool-down period. Mm -hmm. So we think that will help the project be healthier as well. Now, the, the big challenge for us as, as advocacy and outre outreach is I need to start the process of encouraging additional project ideas. So two project ideas that were initially thought of the inclusive naming initiative, get rid of the uses of the term master and slave and blacklist and whitelist and replace them with correct terms. Um, then pipeline help was a project we used last time. Others had suggested some additional ideas like test automation. We've got unit automated tests inside Jenkins that are using an old framework in many cases. Yes. Still J unit three. There are some, and certain certain plugin that I maintain has some J unit three tests in it still that need to be converted. Mm. So J unit three is long gone. J unit four has now been uh, upgraded to J four. unit five, mm. and so there are lots of opportunities there. The other suggestion was multiple tutorials on Jenkins.io, where using these new contributors as test cases. Hey. Why does this tutorial not work? And what would it take to make it work? The, the getting started stuff, there is, they're very difficult. Right. So that it's not because it started. It takes a lot of work to have a very nice, but they're incredibly useful. Right. Exactly. Now, now, the other piece is that 
This one, this one, I worried may be more advanced than a brand new contributor is ready to do because John Mark, as you noted, right. it's difficult to do a good tutorial, right? You, you have to know an awful lot about an awful lot of things in order to do a really good tutorial. Uh, and so, so this one may not be suitable, but the next one, screenshot updates. So in March, oh, go ahead, oh, John Mark. No, that's a good one. That's, that's it, and it improves the quality of, of things and it can teach a lot of interesting things and get people proficient in using the product and making updates. And that's a super idea. Yeah, so, so this screenshot updates concept is in March, there will be significant UI updates to the Jenkins long-term support release. So the March 2022 release will have really nice UI improvements thanks to the work of Jan Farachik and of uh, Tim Jacome. Their work, was supported by Daniel Beck and others, their work has, has brought a much nicer look to the Jenkins UI. But that means our screenshots, are any screenshots we have are pretty much out of date. And so in this April timeframe, it might be a really good opportunity to have them do screenshot updates. Uh, any other project ideas that you've got? Or my next step is to post a proposal for this to the Gitter channel, to the community.jenkins.io, and then start actually to community.jenkins.io and start the conversations there about possible projects and recruiting mentors. Last year, the biggest challenge we had was not getting funding for the project. It was getting mentors who were willing to coach these brand new contributors. There's one side uh, a project or, or I don't know how to phrase it in English, but I'd like to use these kind of projects to clarify, improve, or work out uh, the Gitpod uh implementation documentation and have some real usage under the belt to uh to see so it's not a project per se but i would encourage uh, 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 uh i don't know the young contributors let's call it uh like that uh to to use the technique so that we, we do qualification of that and see where the friction points are. And, and so, so it, it's more a, a tooling and side track to the main effort there. I don't know how to, to phrase that correctly. But. Well, and, and let me give a strong yes to what you're suggesting um, because one of the problems we saw last year was that many of these new contributors in, in West Africa don't have a high-speed computer that they're running on locally. They may be so, using something like a Chromebook. They may be using an outdated Windows computer. It's difficult and, for them to get the latest thing of this or that, but Gitpod would provide that to them. And do they have adequate networking? That's a what concern. Is That's, what is adequate? So this is what I would like to try. Right. Well, but, and that's where at least for plugin development, it may be much better to use Gitpod because when I start up the plugin development environment and it tries to download a big chunk of the internet for dependencies in Maven, I may not have great internet bandwidth, but Gitpod does on the cloud, right? And so they, they have suddenly downloaded all their dependencies from one cloud location to another instead of taking it all the way into West Africa. Right, indeed, and and uh, you're making a strong point. At least I would like to try it out in the wild. So really see right. with with random users uh, what it what it gives, especially for some lightweight things. When well, no, uh, you know the 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 screenshot updates, but even changing the the J unit uh, things and. No, uh, I'm, I'm, well, I, I think, you know, I'm a strong promoter and interested by that technology. Good. And, and that's a, that's a, that's a good one to do. So Alyssa, those were the two things that I had. She code Africa. My next steps there are start the conversation in community.jenkins.io to prepare these project ideas. 
um, and invite mentors to volunteer to help. Uh, the, the challenge is, of course, there's a part of it that's competing or conflicting with Google Summer of Code, right? Not the actual development of Google Summer of Code, but the mind share for Google Summer of Code. So I, I don't want to sabotage our efforts with Google Summer of Code, but this help a, help a fresh brand new person who's in Africa is, is still interesting to me. Any guidance from you, Alyssa, on how to approach it? Um, not off the top of my head, but um, I'm, if there's anything that I can help with, please feel free to pull me in. Great, so I'm gonna go ahead with, with th that approach for SheCode Africa and, and we'll, we'll see how it goes. Okay. Great. And I think those covered the two topics I had. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Great. Thank you for that, Mark. All right. And I will try to share my screen. Okay. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes. Yes. Apologies for the so many windows open, but um, I've added the Jenkins online meetup, which we scheduled for end of this month, uh, Wednesday, the 26th of January. And that is uh, with Uli Hafner. Um, he will be talking about setting up the Jenkins deaf environment at his school. He's a teacher, so um, he'll, he'll show us how he's doing that. Um, we're suggesting that people sign up via the meetup the link and I've put the link here as well. Great. Um, now, Alyssa, yeah. I've got another, as a sub bullet of that, I've got two meetups that I need to schedule and haven't done yet. One is a meetup with Etienne Studer for Jenkins Development Acceleration with Gradle Enterprise. Yeah. And the other is a meetup with Kosuke Kawaguchi for D Jenkins I Development Acceleration with Launchable. Yes. How, now, have can, you reached out to them yet or? They've, they've both agreed in principle to do it, but I need to write an abstract and propose dates. I need to actually how, do the work. <laughs> well, Mark, how, how can we help? I, in this case, I think it's best if I do it because I'm the, I'm the noisy one who launched this project and I'm the one who is, who is sponsoring it. So I'm hesitant to, to bring another voice into it right now just because... Well, uh, Agree, but don't hesitate to ask for help. Great, yeah. thank you. Thanks very much. For sure. Um, okay, so it looks like Oleg. Uh, uh, just, yeah. just a little uh, note. Maybe Alyssa, we should both uh, write down somewhere the idea so that we can serve as a, a crutch to uh, Mark so that he doesn't forget. Yeah, uh, I'll update it after the meeting. I have it. I have okay. it somewhere, so I'll update it. Um, thanks, John Mark. Uh, so looks like Oleg still isn't here. I think we'll wait, just- Wait a sec. So I just see yeah? a Gitter post from him. He says there's no meeting invite for it. So I'm gonna send him a link to this meeting and see if he's available. Maybe he is. Okay. But just a minute, let's that see if I can- odd. Well, it just, you know, he's a busy guy, so- yeah. All right. So if if he's available, that would be great. Yeah. So while we're waiting for Oleg, or oh, what I have listed down here are the proposed project ideas and our planning document. Um, I laid it out as much as I possibly can at this time. So we uh -huh. do have uh, we do have uh, a date for the, um, I will add Chris to here as well. Oh, good. Uh, we do have a date for the application at this point. So they've published the timeline? Yes, they have. Okay. And um, it's here. Good. 
So February 7th. Okay, that's the opening and the closing then uh, is February 21. Three weeks. Yeah, it's not much time. Okay, oh, okay. So, so we've got two weeks, February, February 7th, they open it. We have to be complete and submitted by February 21. Mm -hmm. Great, okay. All right, so we've got just this month. And, well, we can certainly continue soliciting proposals, project ideas, et cetera, but, but we've got to largely have our, our plans in place or good project ideas, et cetera, for end of January, first week of February. Okay, right. great. Right. Um, Alyssa, do you know what the, I, 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 I've read so many documents that I, I forget. What are the prerequisites for the application? Uh, we've, we actually, already... we've actually got a skeleton application from past, past, we, Oleg would typically record the answers to their questions in a form so that we could all review them before we submitted the application. Yeah. And we've got those from past years. Okay, so, got you. Well, this one I didn't. Mark, do we have last year's? Um, I, I have... don't, I don't, I don't know that we have last year's because last year we submitted through CDF. So I don't oh. know for sure. I'd have to look. Okay. We certainly it... have the, the, the record of, of submissions from previous years before that. Okay. So what I have is only from for 2017. Oh, Six, okay. Yeah. That's the only one that I was able to dig up. And the application is it's five years here. ago. Yeah. So I'm sure things has changed since then. Mm -hmm. um, but I would love to see if I can get something from the previous year, if that's possible. But I can also reach out to CDF, Mark, if now I know that it went through them. Yeah, well, and, and Tara Hernandez is a great one to ask for help on that. She may yes. have, have a copy of the document that they submitted. I'll, I'll also check. I thought that the submission packets were linked in our archives. So I think I may be able to find, at least for 2020, I'll look and see if I can provide it to you separately, Alyssa. Okay. All right. Sounds great. Ah, yes. Here it is. The GSOC 2020 application draft. So definitely, I'm going to paste that into the chat here. So it's right on for there. There's the 2020 application if you want to put it into the notes. Yep. And then I think if we look at 2019, we have the similar thing, application draft. Yep, there it is. So here's the a link to the 2019 draft. And then the 2018 draft. I don't see a, link, a 2018 draft. So I've just got 2019, 2020. Let me double check. Maybe we've got a draft for 2021. And I no. So we've got the CDF organization page, but not a not a draft of the packet that was submitted. Okay. Okay. All right. Great. So I will uh, so we will work on that and I'll drive this effort for us um, to make sure that we get things lined up before January or by the beginning of January. And and make sure that uh, uh, large work items that are required for the application are identified on the, the to-do list. Yes. On, on okay. the timeline. Absolutely. So I know that for at least for the, for the immediate um, um, deadline that we want to uh, accomplish is the, the project ideas. So we need the descriptions of those. I mean, we, I think we did great. We have 12 submissions or proposals right. for project ideas. Mm -hmm. I already have at least, I think I have about three um, um, abstracts or descriptions for those. So the rest I still need to um, chase after. Well, so and yeah. the, the project idea pro process that Oleg has used in the past that it helps us assure that the idea is well enough vetted, involves yeah. a submission of
things to take the code adaptation process. I may want to give you some sit down with you and with John Mark separately for some. Hey, here's here's what what we could consider doing if we've got people who are willing to help with writing those things. Okay. Yeah, because this is something that I planned uh, to do this afternoon. This afternoon to check that we have either templates or what is the material uh, because I read the recommendation about that fast that that parts in the the Google documentation. Yeah. yeah, well, and and Alyssa, if on your screen you'd be willing to open a new browser to Jenkins.io, mm -hmm. we could we could actually take a look at it and talk to the perfect. Okay, so here if you go sub projects, Google Summer of Code in Jenkins, and then on the top right-hand corner on this page, there's GSOC 2022. Mm -hmm. I think if you click the, oh no, that, that right, and that just takes us there. The, what we want to see is the, pro, oh yes, see the current project ideas. So click that yeah. hyperlink that's under the, yeah. it's in the first sentence in the top paragraph. This one. Yeah, that one, right, click that. Because what this shows us is accepted ideas and these are ideas that have enough text describing them that people can actually, it's quite strong, and then draft project ideas. So you notice here we only have three, but you've got 12, mm -hmm. 12. So there are nine things that we probably would like to, at least some of them, have them appear on this page so that, that right. for instance, nine of them could at least be ongoing discussion, where we would put them in the ongoing discussion section here because there's something happening in that in the in the mailing list discussing it. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is something I'd like to to review uh, with Alyssa and, and cross check, or or maybe we use the technique that uh, I start based on on the first input by Alyssa, make a prototype of it so that we can uh, review it. Well, we need to synchronize and make work uh, of that. Well, well so, and, and I think that's, as, a, as an idea, what if we took the, I believe the three that are on this page are already in your list of 12, right? That the, mm. these three are there. So yeah. if we took the other nine, oh, you say, what's that? So, so two, two that's on, is already on this list from last year. Uh, one is an automation uh, project idea from Basil. Ah, so that's okay. new. Right. Mm -hmm. So those are the three that I have descriptions for. But I don't ah. know if the Basil idea needs to be vetted and approved and all that. Or well, it, it, no, I think, I think what Basil has written, I think he gave a, a description in the mailing list. Yeah. And that, was, that would, for me, already be enough to justify us, if, if you scroll down, we could, the section that's labeled ongoing sessions mm -hmm. discussion here yeah. says these are proposals in the mailing lists. So, so this would be a great excuse to link to Basel's mailing list item and say, look, here's a mailing list proposal from Basel Crow that suggests this project idea. Okay. Okay, and then the other ones should be would be under draft project ideas. Yeah, or or even if if it's if the discussions only on the mailing list, at least we put them in ongoing discussion. I see, got it. And and if that that's very light, just put them in ongoing discussion because they're being discussed in the mailing list. Mm -hmm. um, if if the people who are discussing them are ready to bring it as a draft idea then an ASCII doc file gets, we need to create an ASCII doc file like this pipeline step documentation generator improvements thing that you see in the middle of the page. Okay. All right. Okay, good. What is the next step for that? So does what? Jean-Marc, would you do you think you'd be willing to attempt to figure out how to add something to the ongoing discussion list? Right, I will do that. And um, once I figure that out, I'm going to ping. Where well, are we losing one day there? Um, 
or yeah, that's... turn it the other way around that Alyssa looks what she would like based on the discussion we had right now, what she would like to have added yep. to that and pointers to the material. Mm -hmm. And tomorrow, my time, I'm going to create a draft. Perfect. Uh, yeah, that, that, that sounds... And a pull request. So we, we leverage the time zone difference. Yeah. I like that. That's great. So Alyssa, like Alyssa reviews the, the topics and suggests to you, hey, I think we should link to this mailing list discussion, this discussion, and this yeah. discussion, and you can then submit the pull request. Yeah. yeah you Excellent. can send that in any form you, you want, mail, Slack, or, or whatever. Great. Thank okay. you, Alyssa. Thanks very much. You bet. No problem. Now back to you had mentioned Oleg and my read from his post in the Gitter chat channel is quote gentle reminder I cannot join the advocacy and outreach meetings unless they get moved to another time slot. I'm not sure if that means he's not available today again I assume it is and let's just look for another time, because I would love to have his guidance on this yeah. We really it would it would help us a bunch but I think we would benefit just by going with this little step that we see let's take it and let's yep. continue forward yeah absolutely okay so i'll touch base with oleg and we'll see that we we can set up another time great yeah super mm, see what else do we have so i think that is all that i have that is related to what is due next in terms of google summer of code um so this project ideas along with preparing for our application are the two big things on my plate for this. Great. Now, now Oleg prompted one question in terms of should we change our meeting time? And with Chris and Diraj both joining us now, we've got two people now from Asia who are in, in the call. I wonder if we ought to put out a, a doodle poll asking for questions or proposals from people on when they would like to meet because Diraj, for instance, meets with us pretty regularly on the, what would be for you, Alyssa, late night Monday. And for you, Jean-Marc is impossible. It's oh, like I, the middle of the night. <laughs> well, well, okay. Now we'll have trouble here at home. <laughs> right. Exactly. But, hey, Trash, but where, where are you located just for, for, for me? You're... Diraj is in Mumbai. Mumbai, okay. Well, right. okay. Yes. it reminds me. Okay, hello. <laughs> uh, Hi, Diraj. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Really challenging. Just for my information, now is the middle of the night too for you or late evening? What time yeah, is it in your play? For me, it's late evening right now. It's 10, 14 p.m. Well, okay. So for Chris now it's over yeah. midnight because yeah. he's in Hong Kong. Right. You guys are troopers. <laughs> You're very courageous, both of you. And yeah. and what what we found worked in the past was to have, or, or what's worked for Doc's office hours is we actually do two sessions, one session that works for European times and one session that works for Asia times, and right. and that's I think there's no shame in us considering that kind of thing where we say look. We, we, we live around a 24 hour world. We can't all be in any one meeting. Yeah. So, so Alyssa, are you open to considering looking for another time when we could meet, hoping that Oleg might be able to join us at least occasionally? Yeah. Because we, we, we can flip flop between uh, dates. This is what you right. propose, Mark. Yeah, alternate. Uh, that, that's, yeah. that's one or, or, or meet. Yeah, one week we meet on Asia time and one mm -hmm. week we meet on Europe time. And if you're if it's not workable for you, you attend every other week, and that's okay. Yeah, and and we and we catch up with the recording and, and these kind of right. kind of things. Exactly. And we we need to figure out a, a way. We un, un, otherwise we're never going to solve the problem of this earth. If we don't find something constructive. Yeah. Right. Okay, very interesting challenge. Yeah. Yeah, we'll make it work. So um, I'll take I'll take a poll and uh, see what people think. Great, super. And that's all that I had for today. Uh, Diraj or Chris, anything that you needed to bring other than what we've already discussed? No, oh, nothing from my side. I just came here to say hi to everyone. <laughs> ah, nice to meet you, hi. Same here.
Thanks a lot. That's all. Nothing else. Um, nothing to me. Chris, is there something that you're interested to learn, or you you just catching catching up and getting in uh, in sync with what we've been doing? Yeah, just catching up for now. Great. Okay. Well, welcome, welcome, Chris. We're super happy to have you here. You're welcome. Yeah. All right. So we'll talk online, I guess, at this point. Thank you, everybody.